Hello everyone, this is Chamyang Tashi Delek and Om Namak Shivai from Tibet. So, Mount Kailash is one of the Asia's most sacred mountain, which is situated in the middle of six mountain ranges, representing the perfect structure of lotus, popularly known for its spiritual values. Mount Kailash received 1,000 of pilgrims, mostly Buddhist, Hindu, Jains and Pun. The region holds of very special religious significance which compels tourists to visit this holy place at least once in their lifetime. So today by this beautiful chance I'm going to show you how inner Kora or Nandi Parikrama looks like which is actually about 34 kilometers. So Kailash inner Kora track is mainly designed to touch every spiritual, natural and culture aspect of this region. It's physical challenging. Climbing up the Kora for the devotee takes the rock terrain and a sudden climatic variations and increasing in altitude are what makes this trekking so hot. The Kailash inner Kora comprises of a 34 km journey on the foothill of the holy Mount Kailash. Mount Kailash, which is at an elevation of 19,000 feet above the sea, we can get an exceptional opportunity to witness the majestic beauty of the sacred Mount Kailash along with the splendid view of turquoise colored Lake Manasarova and Lake Rakshastal. And on the way to Inner Kora, the first monastery that we will visit is called Selung Monastery and after finishing the trekking, we will end to Gyangdrak Monastery. The law of the religion for Kailash Inner Kora is actually that you are allowed to do Inner Kora when you have finished doing 13 Outer Kora. And why is it after doing 13 Outer Kora is because we have a believing that after doing 13 outer Kora, you will be reclaimed from the sin that you have committed. And that means only the people without sins are actually permitted to do the inner Kora as in the law of religion. This video is the part 5 of Kailash Parigrama and we leave our hotel by 6.30 in the morning to drive off for Nandi Parigrama and from Tarjan we have to drive another 5 kilometers to Serlung Monastery where we are going to start our trekking. And we are so lucky that the weather is perfect today, but the road is a little bit bumpy. This is the end and from here we have to start our trekking to Inner Kora. And before starting this trekking, first we are going to visit this authentic monastery, the Selung Gomba. Hey guys, good morning to everyone. This is Jamia. Today, I'm going to do a really, really special thing nearby Mount Kailash, which will be the Ina Kora. Can you imagine Ina Kora? We are going to see two beautiful monasteries, which is called Selung Monastery and which is called Yangtak Monastery, okay? And then when we reach to Ina Kora uh, or Nanti Kora, we will see there the 13 tombs Kutla from high Tetan Lama and then you also can touch Mount Kailash over there and I really really wish that you will also enjoy that with me and 
and I'm also really, really interested as well because this is also my first time doing the Inakora. And I'm really happy to show you how Inakora looks like. Please follow me and enjoy it with me. So this monastery had a history around 500 years old and from here to uh, Nanti, Nanti Koro, we have like 30 kilometers to walk and this is really a holy monastery and nothing has destroyed this monastery so far from 500 years ago and I still have lots and lots of people going to do the inner Koro with me as well. I had a super good blessing from this monastery and this monastery was really special monastery and now we are going to start our trekking and also please wish me good luck thank you guys and let's rock and roll so after my lots and lots of experience here since I'm 15 I've been visiting this high holy Mount Kailash and now I want to talk about how to stay healthy at high altitude I thought that will be actually helpful if I share it with you so the two things that I want to remind you and I want to talk about in relation out of altitude are first how high is the track and second what medicine can you take with you so the first one is how high is it and part of the Nandi track are extreme high altitude that's just the truth and so it's about 34 kilometers track and the low point on the track is 5300 meters and the high point is about 5900 meters that means you should really take seriously and you need to make preparation for it so the second thing is what medicine can you take so when you talk to your doctor you should be talking to a doctor and a travel doctor so when you talk to a doctor about tibet ask them about taking diamox or acetyl dolomite so that is the only medication that has been clinically proven to be effective for altitude sickness prevention there are actually lots and lots of herbal remedies that are mentioned when it comes to altitude sickness prevention but none of them unfortunately have been proven they haven't been proven or disproven but the only one like in double blind clinical trials that is proven effective is acetyl zolomide i definitely recommend that you do take it and you were actually recommended to take 250 milligrams tablet twice a day if you are going to high altitude it works but it has that negative effects of making your hands feel really tingly and weird so fortunately, more recently, the recommendation by Wilderness Medical Society is that you take 125 milligram twice a day. So basically half and often it's like 250 milligram tablet and you cut that in half, take half in morning, half at night and hope you will listen to me because I am telling you that with experience of being guide more than 10 years in Tibet. And by using this time, I would like to tell you what really happened at Mount Kailash. So perhaps the Buddhist legend about Mount Kailash gives the most interesting indication of its true significance. Buddhists believe that they are sorcerer mule who challenged the sorcerer of the Pun religion, Naro Punju. There was actually a fear superhuman battle, but both sorcerers turned out to be equally powerful. They then 
decided to race each other to the top of holy Mount Kailash. Now, what is interesting is that one of them used some sort of magic drum to reach the top, which is actually Narupunju, and while Malarepa by using rays of the sun. And what if these magicians were actually ancient aliens using advanced technology that primitive? Humans could only explain by calling them God. Please compare the remains of Pilma Pankut in the equally high places but on an another continent. So what does this sound like? If we take immediately, then one of these legendary figures uses a spacecraft and the other some form of teleportation. The ancient god favored high places and built installation there. Ezioko was brought to see one of these places. Zeus lived on one. So what about holy Mount Kailash? Is it another knot in a global grid? built with some merely in technology that we cannot actually see and do not understand. And I'm tracking parallel to Nandi mountain and it is not really easy for us to even if we are too bad and you know. So I need to walk slowly and you see I have to track till that glacier over there. I guess probably we have to track more like 7 to 8 kilometers. And now I would like to tell you about Mount Kailash that has been discovered by God. So if I look at this video, this to me personally crops everything and anything I've ever seen. There is something going on here, has been going on here for a very long time, probably predate human by millions of years. And this is an active area and I can totally believe religion are based on what's going on here. You can tell just by looking from far away. This is just not some geological formation throughout here. This is beginning to look like something that has been intelligent designed. You can see here massive monumental carving. This is something between 200 and 250 meters height. And if you give a little more focus, you can see numerous carving on it. And I've been walking already like 3 hours since this morning and down there I can actually see some kind of lost kingdom. Let's go and check what it is. So look at here guys, it's a big mystery for me. But I'm pretty sure that it must be a small town or a monastery in a past, you know. And now it's absolutely destroyed but it also might could be the home of Lord Shiva. So you see up there the big black rock is called Ravan Lingam in Hindi and I hope everyone who believes in it will get blessing from it. And up there is what we called Atma Lingam. And look at here, someone have left this Hindu statue here. And I think it might could be Shiva, maybe.
and from here we can see Nandi and that's Ravanlingam and that's Atmalingam but I'm terribly sorry as I'm a Buddhist I couldn't explain you how it was believed by Hindu and it would be really cool if you could teach me how it was believed in Hinduism and you see up there with the lots and lots of prayer flags so that's what we called Chotin Choksum in Tibetan language and in Hindi they are calling it Saptarishi Caves and the altitude now is about 5820 meters above sea level and if you walk slowly it was actually okay and you see where they have lots and lots of prayer flags up there so this is the end point of the inner core and you're actually not allowed to go more higher than that and that is the most difficult part and the most dangerous part of the inner core and you have to be super careful because if you fall down it's more or less like 70 meters down there and I really really recommend you to have in proper tracking shoes if you're doing the inner core really hard tracking not everyone can do actually that so you must have to be well really well prepared before you are starting the inner core you must be really really well prepared okay and I suggest you to have a really good boot to climb this inner core and right now I'm at Nandi so this is Nandi Kora I made it it is absolutely a heaven. I'm 100% sure this is the land of God. Here we also can see There are those 13 stupas and all their body bodies. Look at those stupas. We have 13 stupas like that. I'm going to make a cora around those stupas. Mount Kailash. I have seen Mount Kailash. I have touched Mount Kailash. So this new brought me here. I just heard about Mount Kailash like a long ago. And during this difficult year, with my own situation, I'm thinking like, let's just come to see it without any religion or any one force me. Let me get to him, to so close to him. I'm speechless and I'm so lucky. I can't describe the whole trip. And every day is amazing. Every single person I met on the way, every single second I've spent here, it's just perfect, make the whole trip, the whole completed. It's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I have to come back. <laughs> and it's a magic place. So after all, I'm so so happy to reach here at the most holiest mountain in the world and so proud that I've touched and tasted Kailash. Thank you so much for that holy blessing from Mount Kailash and by this beautiful chance here at this highest point near to holy Mount Kailash, I'm going to pray may every living being will be saved from this COVID-19 and hope everyone will get that vaccine as soon as possible and I hope Kailash have heard me. 
Thank you so much once again. After all, the 34 kilometers of Nandi or Ina Kora nearby Holy Mount Kailash, today first in the morning we have visited Selung Monastery as the starting point and then we have visited Nandi, touched Kailash and visited Saptarishi Cave. And as the ending point is to visit the Gyangtrak Monastery and now by using this time I'm going to show you that holy Gyangtrak Monastery and after visiting that monastery that will be consisted as the complete inner Kora. After the Ina Kora, the trekking of Ina Kora, we can visit this beautiful monastery which is called Gyangdrak Monastery, right? And then they still have lots and lots of important and holy statues that can, we can visit in this monastery. The elevation of the Gyangdrak Monastery is about 5,500 meters above sea level and it is considered as the world's highest monastery. And this monastery was actually founded in 13th century, which have in history about 800 years. And here they practice the Drikung Kaikyu sect of Tibetan Buddhism. This is the end of 34 kilometers striking around Inakora nearby Holy Mount Kailash and today we actually have tried our best to show you every corner of this striking and I really wish and hope that you like our video and if you like my video please please don't forget to subscribe it and touch the like and good night from Holy Nandi this is Jamyang, welcome to Tibet, we are the one that can show you original Tibet and if you have this chance in future, please let me show you Tibet. Thank you once again and see you in my next video, Kora at Lake Manasarwat.